Chapter 4, recorded for Counseling 6303 for Houston Baptist University, recorded by Dr. John Spody. Male Sexual Anatomy and Physiology. The Penis. There are external and internal anatomy factors to be considered. External anatomy of the penis includes foreskin, glands, shaft, and root. Internal anatomy of the penis includes cavernous body, spongy body, and the penile urethra. A couple of questions we should be considering as we go through this chapter include, what are the major external and internal male sex structures and what functions do they serve? Another question could be, why is it important to conduct regular genital self exams and what should a man look for during these examinations? Below you will see a diagram of the penis. This is figure 4.1, interior structure of the penis. The first part is a view from above, the interior structure of the penis. And the bottom diagram is a cross section of the penis. Areas that are particularly responsive to stimulation and include the corona, the rim of the penal glands, the frenulum, highly sensitive thin strip of skin that connects the glands to the shaft, strengthening musculature around the penis, Kegel exercises can produce benefits. The penis continued. Below you see figure 4.2, the underside of the uncircumcised penis, showing the location of the corona and the frenulum, two areas of the penis that harbor a high concentration of sensitive nerve endings. The scrotum and the testes. The scrotum includes the pouch of skin of external male genitals that encloses the testes. Testis, male gonad that produces sperm and sex hormones. Cryptochidism, undescended testes. Seminiferous tubules, thin coiled structures in the testes in which sperm are produced. Epididymis, the structure along the back of each testis in which sperm maturation occurs. Below you will see a diagram of the scrotum and testes. This is figure 4.4, the underlying structures of the scrotum. This illustration shows portions of the scrotum cut away to reveal the chromasteric muscle, spermatic cord, vas deferens, and the testis within the scrotal sac. The scrotum and testes continued. This is figure 4.5. The first figure shows the internal structure of a testis. Sperm are produced in this part and transported in the second part of the diagram. It is a cross section or enlargement view from within the first diagram. The vas deferens. Sperm carrying tube that begins at the testis and ends in the urethra. Sperm held in the epididymis eventually drains into the vas deferens. Vasectomy is a form of male sterilization. This involves removing a section from each vas deferens. Male sexual anatomy. In figure 4.6,
the male sexual anatomy is shown. This is a cross-section side view of the male reproductive organs. Seminal vesicles and prostate gland. Seminal vesicles. These are small glands adjacent to terminals of the vas deferens. They secrete an alkaline fluid conductive to sperm motility that constitutes the greatest portion and volume of the seminal fluid released during ejaculation, approximately 70%. The prostate gland is the gland located at the base of the bladder. It produces about 30% of the seminal fluid released during ejaculation. The Cowper's gland and semen. The Cowper's glands are pea-sized glands located alongside the urethra base. These glands secrete alkaline fluid during sexual arousal. Semen or seminal fluid the volume is about one teaspoon, 100 to 500 million sperm per ejaculation. Erection. This is coordinated by the autonomic nervous system. Arteries leading to the three erectile cylinders in the penis expand. Blood outflow cannot keep up with the inflow. The capacity for erection is present at birth and common in infant boys. Psychogenic and physiogenic erections. Inputs come simultaneously from both thoughts and physical stimulation. A couple of questions for us to consider as you read this chapter include, what physiological processes cause an erection? How do psychological and physiological factors interact to influence erections. Ejaculation. Spinal reflex triggers two phases. Emission, fluid gathering in the urethra bulb, and expulsion, semen is expelled. There's also a retrograde ejaculation, semen is expelled into the bladder. Nocturnal emissions are involuntary ejaculation during sleep. Concerns about sexual functioning. Penis size is oftentimes seen as a symbol of virility. There are many myths related to penis size and sexual pleasure. Some of these myths include the implication that bigger is better, that erect penises are different than flaccid ones. The truth is erect penises show less variation than flaccid penises. There's a matter of subjective preference. And a phalloplasty is a penal augmentation. Another phenomenon, cultural culture-bound phenomenon is genital retraction syndrome. This is where males believe that their penis is shrinking and retracting into his body. Other concerns about sexual functioning. Circumcision. This is the surgical removal of penis foreskin. Some of the pros are the hygienic value and increased HIV protection for men who have received circumcision. Some of the cons are the possibility of unknown function, altered sexual function, trauma for the newborn, and riskier behavior. The American Academy of Pediatrics has a moderate opposition to circumcision. The benefits slightly outweigh the risks. Data does not significantly support 
the recommendation of this routine procedure. Male genital health concerns, the penis, healthcare issues, cleanliness is important, infection tra transmission, and the use of condoms in decreasing certain sexually transmitted diseases. However, some sexually transmitted diseases are small enough to fit through the porous nature of a condom. Injuries, hazards of sexual gadgets and fractures during coitus, and penile cancer, which can be deadly if not diagnosed early. Male genital health concerns continued. Testicular cancer, Testicular cancer is more common in young men ages 20 to 35 years old. Risk factors related to testicular cancer include smoking, having a family history of testicular cancer, being white, and cryptokidism. Symptoms of testicular cancer include hard or irregular mass and testes, fever, groin ache, heaviness in testis, tender breasts, painful fluid accumulation or scrotum swelling. Survival is greater than 90% if detected in the early phases. Prostate diseases. Prostatitis is enlarged or inflamed prostate, benign prostatic hyperplasia is increased prostate gland size, prostate cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death. New U.S. Prevention Service Task Force guidelines Healthy men should not have the prostate-specific antigen PSA test. Treatment options for prostate cancer and the benefits must outweigh the risk. Summary. Sexual anatomy of men and women is a complex issue. It varies widely from one individual to another. Knowing about our own sexual anatomy and functioning provides a degree of comfort with our bodies. There should be a greater ability to communicate with a partner and crucial biases for detecting potential health problems. I will add a note to the slide that as future therapists, if you're pursuing a license or a certification, it's important to be able to speak on the vagina and the penis in such a way that is professional and allows your clients to deal with the issues that they're currently dealing with.